Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, BOMB Flyer here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use styrene tubing to help make weapon modifications or potentially replacements for some of your miniatures. More specifically, we'll be focusing on medium lasers as they seem to be pretty useful in a lot of applications for either missing weapons or for a lot of the modifications and variants of those that are out there. In these examples, I've got a hunchback 4P with a bank of six medium lasers where the autocannon used to be. And in this custom version of a Thunderbolt, I've got eight medium lasers that have been replaced per the description of the custom hero mech. But it's not uncommon to have the three medium laser brace that's on this unseen miniature not be present. So this could be helpful for you to just replace those three that you would normally not have. Here's some helpful tools that I'll be using throughout this video. Files, hobby knives, razor blades, pin vices, straight pins, flush cutters, and super glue. In addition to that, I also have a self-healing sewing mat that I like to cut on when I'm working on my desk because I don't want to damage the surface below and to get a little bit of a grippy surface for cutting and modifying. The styrene that I'll be using came from evergreen scale models and an assortment. And the diameter that I'll be using is approximately two millimeters or 1 16th of an inch. I also wanted to mention that having some sticky tack or poster tack handy helps when you're cutting from the smaller bits flying off potentially somewhere that you can't get them. I'm gonna be making a 10 laser bank of medium lasers for this mod. So I'm gonna do quite a few cuts and glues. I'm looking at making it approximately one quarter, maybe to a half inch long because I'm gonna cut it in half and flip it over on itself. So what I'll do is I'll measure approximately where I want it to be and using one of these lines, I know where I'm gonna cut. They don't have to be all perfect as you get them the first time because we're gonna file and cut them down. I'll repeat this process until I have five and then we'll glue together the layer. I've got all five of these glued together. What I did was hold them down with a hobby blade so that they wouldn't roll away and then using a pin I placed glue in between the gaps you can also put a dot and spread it out and then wipe it away with a paper towel. Just be aware that super glue and styrene set up very quickly as far as the bond. So you probably need to just work one at a time, get them lined up and then go to the next. Don't try to do all five at once. I don't normally recommend you glue on top of your cutting mat either just to avoid getting glue all on it. Now that my glue is cured, I'm going to want to even out the edges. I'm gonna trim it first with a razor blade now I've got this side and I'll still hit it with a file, but I wanna make sure I have enough left over for the length that I want. I think I wanna have them be about that long. So again, using the guidelines on my cutting mat, that's where I'm gonna cut. All right, so now I've got the side that I want to use as my guide for the next cut. Sometimes the styrene will kinda of deform a little bit so either using a hobby knife or some sandpaper or the file, the uh, emery board that I showed you, you can clean some of that up and then get both sides to bond together flush so that everything is, is perpendicular or well parallel in this case to where you want it to be. So I'm going to clean these up and then I'll show you how to glue them together. I've taken to using tweezers here to line these up. I'm just going to put a dot of glue and get it approximately where I want it to be. And then I'm going to check the alignment. I'm looking at it from the side, which you can't see me do, just to make sure that they are lined up. And now what I'll do is once this glue is cured, I'm gonna trim off the back edge to make it flush with the shorter side here. So I went in and used my flush cutters, using the flush side closest to the areas that I wanna keep flat to remove the last excess from the previous gluing step. Now I've got my emery board. And this is what'll give you a good gluing surface, as well as making all of the barrels match length on the outward side. Once you've got those barrel lengths smoothed out well enough to glue them down, that's all that's really left to get done. Now that the glue's dry and it's attached, this next step is completely optional. It's uh, drilling out the barrels to add a little bit of depth, and I like to add the jeweling effects when I'm painting. So that's what the straight pin or sharp pin was for. It's difficult to show on camera, but what I'm doing is taking this pin 
and finding the center of the styrene rod and making a pilot hole so that when I go in with my pin vise or my small circuit board drill bits that I like to use, I have a good guide right in the middle of the tube and working gently and slowly, you can start to see the depression of where that hole would be. So if it's a little, little bit off, you can make an adjustment. Don't use a lot of pressure. Styrene drills very easily. Here's the photograph of how it turned out. You can see that with a little bit of creativity and some patience, you can make some really neat modifications for variants or custom loadouts. Here's also a, sh a shot of the rotary auto cannons I made using a smaller diameter styrene. So as you get more practice working with these types of materials, you can really just expand upon what you want to create and what you want to do to modify your miniatures. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Leave your questions or comments in the section below. Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.